Okay, so I'm really loving talking about Zora at the moment because I've begun rereading his story and the journey he's taken to get where we are today. And honestly, not only has his individual journey been amazing, but the journey his swords have taken and the sheer number of swords that he's used is actually mind-blowing. And let me debunk something right now, because it seems that generally in the community, people seem to think that Zoro has only used nine swords. And I can tell you that that's not true, and I'll show you why. So what I'm going to do is put a sword counter on the top right of this video, and we're going to add up these swords as we go along to see just how many swords Zoro has used. So let's get straight into things, because the first sword that I believe Zoro owned was actually shown to us in Zoro's flashback in Shimotsky village and this was after he had fought Kawina so many times and had now got to the point where they decided to use real blades and it's here that we see Zoro use two unnamed swords which were actually given to him as a child by Shimotsky Kozaburo and Zoro kept these swords with him for an extremely long time until they were shattered by Mihawk in Baratie. But before we get to that battle, he also had one more sword on him. And that sword is Wado Ichimonji. It's one of the 21 great Maitos and was forged by the man, the legend, or should I say the legendary swordsmith, Shimotsuki Kazaburo, and was actually owned by his granddaughter and Zoro's friend Kuino, and was actually given to him by Kuino's father, Kirishoru, who was the son of Kazaburo as Zoro and Kuino shared a dream. And I truly believe that this sword will be with Zoro right until the end of the series. Just given the fact that it didn't even scathe in his battle against Mihawk at Baratie and it holds so much importance to Zoro. But on to swords number four and five. And these were Johnny and Yosaku's swords who had a pair of Nakiri swords. And whilst at the time we were reaching Arlong Park, Zoro was severely injured. Given the injury he had incurred in his fight against Mihawk, Zoro found himself in a battle again against Hatchin, but this time only had one sword, which we know to be the Wado Ichimonji. But given this, Zoro borrowed the Nakiri swords, which are Maito rank, and was actually able to defeat Hatchin, who had six swords. But anyway, let's move on, because after borrowing these swords, they of course had to be returned, meaning Zoro still only had one sword. So as the crew arrive in Logtown, Zoro went into a swordsman shop and actually picked up the Sandai Kitetsu because its presence drew him in. However, once the shopkeeper saw that Zoro was eyeing this sword, he did warn him that it was said to be a cursed sword and to bring great misfortune upon its owner. And I always love seeing this scene in the anime, because Zoro tests his fortune as he throws up the blade, sticks his arm out and tests his luck to see if it will indeed bring harm to him. And as we all know now, it didn't. And I mean, this sword is still with him till today. And as a side note, it's always interesting that this was meant to be a cursed sword. And also the sixth sword that he used. Coincidence or not? I'd say not, given Oda is a genius. But onto his seventh sword. Because after the shop owner had seen that Zoro's luck was stronger than the curse, he brought out the Yubashiri from the back which too is one of the 50 skillful grade Mitos and Zoro really liked it, calling it a nice sword and that it was really easy to use. However, this actually didn't last very long as it was destroyed in Enya's lobby and this was in his battle against Shu who had the rust rust through and rusted this sword. But one thing many people forget here is that Zoro actually uses an 8th sword here which is the marine cutlass which is basically the standard curved sword that we see all the fodder marines using. But Zoro doesn't use this sword for long because once again it is destroyed in his battle against Shu. But back to Yubashiri because Zoro did the right thing with this sword and he laid it to rest at Thriller Bark replacing it with Shusui and honestly I loved Shusui so much. This sword is number 9 by the way and Shusui first appeared in the story during the Thriller Bark arc where Ryuma appeared as a zombie in front of Zoro after being given Brook Shadow. Now Shusui is not only one of the 21 great great swords but is also a black blade and prized as the national treasure of the Wano country. It was originally buried with Ryuma until his grave was robbed by Gekko Moria. Now during Ryuma's shadows battle with Zoro, Ryuma was so impressed with Zoro as a swordsman that he gifts it to Zoro and Zoro literally uses it as a replacement for Yubashiri and he keeps his sword right up until Wano Country where it was stolen by Kyukumaru and returned to its rightful place which is Ryuma's grave. 
But before we get to this point in the Wano country, we have to backtrack a bit because during the beginning of the Wano country arc, we see Zoro on his own, leaving a bar when he runs into an infamous slasher. And the slasher escapes with the crimes he's committed pinned on Zoro. And ultimately, the three swords that Zoro had on him at the time, which were the Wada Ichimonji, the Sandai Kitetsu, and Shusui, were taken from Zoro. And he was given what I'm calling his ninth blade, which is the Seppuku blade. And he was given this to commit Seppuku in order to grant him an honorable death. However, Zoro, of course, doesn't commit Seppuku and uses this blade to actually attack and take back his swords and escape, making this the tenth blade that he uses. But let's go back to Shusui, because remember when I said that Gyukimaro stole Shusui? Well, you didn't think Zoro was going to take this sitting down, did you? No. So Zoro chases after Gyukimaro and ends up running into Kamazo, who we know to be killer, and they also engage in a battle. Now at this point, Zoro is one sword short, and he gets stabbed with Kamazo's scythe. So Zoro gets creative here and takes the scythe, puts it in his mouth as his third blade and uses his three sword style to win this battle. So if I'm correct, this will be his 11th blade. Now after this battle, Zoro was injured and was healed by Hiyori. But once he came back to consciousness, he was still on the hunt for Shusui. However, Hiyori comes to an agreement with Zoro. And no, not that type of agreement. You naughty naughty. But since Hiyori is the daughter of Odin, she inherited one of his two swords in Enma, which is one of the 21 great swords too, and also forged by Shimotsuki Kozaburo. And she agreed that she would give Zoro Enma under the promise that he would return Shusui to Ryuma's grave. And that's how Zoro used his 12th sword. And that's about as far as we've come in the story so far. And honestly, Zoro's journey to these three swords that he holds now has been great. And unlike Shusui, none of them are black. So could he turn one or all three of them black once we get to the end of the story? Who knows? But let me know what you all think. Do you think Zoro will turn all three swords black? Have I missed out on any of the blades that Zoro has used in the story? Let me know down in the comments. I found myself getting confused as I was trying to think of all the blades that Zoro has used. So I'm sure I've made a mistake somewhere, so please do let me know if I have. But as always, please make sure you leave a like on the video and make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out when I drop more content just like this. Say.